Hello guys and welcome in this new video on Medico channel and welcome in this new video the game engine series. Now in the previous video we talked about uh, sequence animation. So we learned that there are two ways of making animations. The first way is by using sprite sheet. So a sprite sheet is basically like a map, like a, you know, an, a, an image on which you have different images with the same size and it and each image is like a frame which defines the animation for, for state. For example, if you want to jump, you will need to have many, uh, many frames on that sheet to make your animation. Like here, this player right here used uh, a, a, a sprite sheet to be animated. We're just, we're just looping to that, uh, on that uh, sprite sheet and take a specific part of that image and throw it on the screen with a specific time. And uh, that's why we get this smooth animation. But in the other side, we also have the sequence animation, which is an, another way of making it. We have single images, which we actually draw on the screen with a specific time. It's basically the same thing, but there is a difference since we only have one image in this case, but here we have many images and we simply bring those images together to create a nice animation as is right here. Now we have been talking about sequences. So we have, when I start this program right here, you can see this enemy right here start with one animation and then change to another one and transit to another one. So this is actually what makes it so powerful. The fact, the fact that we can simply change animation instantly and you know, that's really nice. I really like it and I enjoy it. Now um, in this video, we're gonna be uh, doing some more stuff. I don't really remember what we're actually gonna be doing. Yes, of course, I'm going to be showing you how I did this guy right here. So because it wasn't the case in the previous video, we didn't want to, you know, do that in the previous video because it was getting too long. That's why we decided to move forward and do this in this one right here. So we're going to be see how to create this enemy and use the sequence animation that we created before. But before we get started, I want to invite you guys to subscribe to my channel, like this video and share with your friends. And I also want to invite you guys to go out and support me on Patreon and, you know, if you support me on Patreon, you become a patron and you will get access to uh, download um, even the final version of this project right here. So you will not have to wait when I upload videos before you get access to that because you probably want to do something specific and you think I have it in my course. So you can just go out and become like a Patreon member and you get access on that. And you know, in some cases, you also have personal interaction with me you can exchange with me personally if you want if you're interested in that i don't know why you should but that's only uh, what i'm offering so i don't want to spend your time too much Now the first thing you need to do is to go into your character folder. There you need to create um, your new class called enemy. So you, you need to create a new class called enemy. You can see right here we have an enemy and enemy.h and cpp. And the enemy is just like this. It's not so different from the player. We have the collider, the rigid body animation, last safe position he has, and uh, yeah, the rest is just function that was inherited from you know game object that's basically it now we move to our cpp file this is the constructor we simply call our super constructor which is in return going to be calling the constructor of game object and so go on we initialize our rigid body we give the same gravity so that's what that's how we want it we also initialize our box collider we didn't set a buffer we leave it like that doesn't matter you can set it if you want and uh, yeah now we initialize the animation you can see now we're using our sequence animation and we say repeat is equal to false because for the state in the beginning it's going to be up here we simply initialize it repeat equal to false we do it like that but it doesn't matter since we're going to be changing the state down here and here we can simply pass so you remember in the previous video we talked about this pass function. So we simply pass the animation file that I showed you 
uh, before so let me go out and show you again so you guys can know what I'm talking about right now um, still need to find my project folders so go to the assets and we have this animation file right here in this part we're actually passing that file and uh, in that file we have all in all sequence animation of our in of our boss our enemy you can see right here we have idle attack appear with the frame ids or the texture ids that will be used for each frame that we have to draw on the screen so we just pass that and we set the current sequence as being boss appear so when the application start we just set it to be appear that's why it appears and then it changed to idle so that's the idea and then the draw function is straightforward we simply draw the current frame on the screen so it simply takes x and y how we scale because uh, this guy was actually huge so if i leave this to one you will see how huge he is i really want to show you that's why it was important for us to add that scale function you see very huge it's not really fitting on the screen so that's why we need to scale and make sure we have we have the size we really need so this can be important when you have enemies greater than the player where you are, where your boss is actually a huge guy you can scale it up and have a nice image but we want to scale it down to have a small image and it will actually fit to the design and you see you can actually have something nice like that so um we have that draw function the update function is not so different from the player it's always the same principle if you want to move a character you need to move it on the x-axis and then on the y-axis you need to handle those separately so if you mix them together you will have a lot of problem and we still do the same thing with the box collider and the transform we check the collision on the x-axis so it's not moving actually but we just wanted to make this clear because if we didn't do that then he will he will have fall through and we don't want that that's why it's perfectly on the ground right here that's what we want we actually want and uh, the y-axis is the same we just check and here this is something important um, we simply say okay if the animation is ended if the first animation that we set it here is ended then we set repeat the true and we change the set that's perfect I really like this so we simply change and we set it to idle that why when we start the first animation we wait till the animation ends then we change the state we move it to idle we could have changed it to something else like uh, uh, I think it's attack let me make sure yeah attack we have attack also you see it will first appear and then he will start attacking that's it just like that we can figure out this we don't have to handle the size of the animation we don't have to handle how many frames it has we don't have to think about all that we simply use our animation and that's the idea of a game engine you don't want to mess around with numbers and stuff everywhere you want to make something consistent that could be reused every time or easily changed and even though we we will simply change um, uh, anything in the even though we want to change something in our animation we don't have to go in the source code we simply go in the uh, xml file and there we'll change something and we get the same result and it's gonna be just fine we also have a die animation which we want to see the die so simply gonna appear and then he will die simply call this up here and then die again see we said repeat if we put repeat to false we only do it once this console right here i hope it's gonna work i haven't tried that so this is the first time i'm trying it so let's see oh it hasn't worked <laughs> i don't know what happened because i set this guy before setting the state you see that's important make sure make this first and then make this. i hope so I, i'm not sure you know i'm not sure hope this is gonna work and i pray that it does this work this work but no it ain't working so i'm gonna see how to figure out that i don't know why it's um it's stopping i said repeat it to false maybe there's something missing i i'll check that later but i think you catch the idea of this 
this is actually how this is working it's just a simple problem it's not a big deal i'll find out but for now uh just leave it like that so that's it for this side now there is still one thing i created this uh, enemy uh, guy and how did i edit into our game did i simply draw it did i call it no we add a new thing in our engine like we have this vector right here you go to your engine H. we have this vector which contains um this game object list so all object that we will have to add in this project will be added inside this guy here you know you can use unique pointer or all that kind of stuff but now just go ahead and use it like that and this is really important because if we also create another xml file called entities or objects we can simply create those objects in our xml file specify the position the scale and all that kind of stuff the texture id and we simply pass that and use like a, a, a game object factory to create all those objects and put them on the screen so easily you guys if you have been following along then this will be clear in your head how you can do this this will be easy but we haven't created an object factory right now so we're going to be dealing with that so this is actually why we need something like this we want to get track on all objects that we created and if i go to my cpp file so i don't need to have my player declared outside anymore i can simply go out create the player the warrior player i also create the enemy called boss and then when i create them i simply push them in this vector right here and down here i'll simply go and create a loop and draw all component on the screen so i simply say r and e and i look through the object to the game objects and then i draw them the same thing is done for the update and i also want to do the same thing for the clean i haven't done that be able to call the clean function of each object so do that right now simply say clean so that's important and this is how you can actually because you know c++ is really you know sensible on what the, the about memories and variable declare and free memory so make sure you always clean stuff because you have some memory latency thing. you don't want that and uh, yeah this guy is still like this because you know memory the guy we haven't changed so that basically um what we did i hope i haven't forgotten anything and uh, yeah that that was actually what we had to deal with in this video so i hope you guys are enjoying i hope you guys um find this interesting if you do don't leave without writing a comment down there you can simply leave a good word a good for like you know this really helped or this is uh, this sucks if it sucks i want to know because i can be here doing my best and you guys find that i'm just messing around with stuff i don't have like a purpose in what i'm doing but you know thank you guys for watching videos on medical channel and uh, i hope you guys will subscribe and i hope you guys will go out and support me on patreon go out and do that and you will also get access to the source code if it hasn't worked for you because you know it often happens you simply download the source code and you know file it and everything will be okay so thank you guys again See you in the next video we're gonna be talking about i don't know yet i need to check what we're gonna be talking about in the next video probably gonna be i don't know but for now thank you ciao